Connect multiple devices simultaneously. Internet like a boss. SLT Mobitel Fiber. Connect multiple devices simultaneously. Internet like a boss. SLT Mobitel Fiber. Power Tomex. Fellam sa visibil ke awam kare dinna tunak bakpa toilet ka fresh vata bai. Tomex. Tonight, promises versus reality. The central bank pledges to bolster forex reserves beyond $3 billion by the end of the year, while inflation bites hard. If we reach a high for inflation, that will have more serious issues in the economy. Iranian connection. Sri Lanka strikes a deal to pay fuel bill with Ceylon tea. So we settled the loan and also in the process we tried to strengthen the market share again, which is something very important for Ceylon tea. Unforgotten. Crack in the Express Pearl wreckage complicates wreck removal. Process at least will take a few months. Uh, Resolve Marine actually, they mentioned at least they will take 150 days to remove underwater countries. A success or not, that's the question. The island-wide GMOA strike worked off for a second day. Motives yet again questioned. All that and much more coming up on First at Nine. This Wednesday, the 22nd of December, 2021. Fair and lovely will alut nama then glow and lovely. Fair and lovely then glow and lovely. From Adha Verana, this is Adha Verana First at Nine. Live from Studio 24 in Colombo. Good evening, welcome to First at Nine. I'm Dhammi Kekanaika. Now then, the Central Bank of Sri Lanka assures the people that the measures being taken at present will ensure that by the end of 2021, official reserves will remain above 3 billion US dollars. Releasing a media communique this evening, the Central Bank said that despite the headwinds of the economic impact of COVID-19 and the challenges posed by adverse developments in the external sector, the Sri Lankan economy showed resilience throughout 2021. It goes on to say that as articulated in the six-month roadmap, number of foreign exchange inflows are envisaged in the very near term and major foreign exchange inflows to the central bank include swap facilities with Middle Eastern and other regional central banks amounting to about $2 billion. The central bank says that the government is also in the process of securing government-to-government -government financing, syndicated loans as well as loans from multilateral organisations. With the recent rise in departures for foreign employment and exponential growth observed in tourist arrivals, the central bank expects the external sector to recover well in the period ahead and the pressures observed at present expected to moderate with increased inflows to the economy. Now, the communique says that the government and the central bank remain confident that these expected inflows will materialize and the reserve position will remain at comfortable level throughout the year 2022. In the meantime, the headline inflation in Sri Lanka has increased to 11.1% in November by 2.8% from the month of October. Economic experts see the double-digit inflation as an alarming situation and urges the government to address it at the earliest, as an escalation to hyperinflation will bring more serious repercussions. As per inflation figures issued by the Central Bank of Sri Lanka for the month of November, headline inflation has increased to 11.1% from 8.3% in October 2021. On an annual average basis, the National Consumer Price Index increased to 6.2% in November this year from 5.7% in October. Inflation was driven by monthly increases of prices of items in both food and non-food categories. Subsequently, food inflation increased to 16.9% in November from 11.7% in October, while non-food inflation also increased to 6.2% in November from 5.4% in October. Monthly change of NCPI was recorded at 3.14% in November due to increases observed in prices of items in both food and non-food categories, which were 2.61% and 0.53% respectively. Accordingly, within the food category, prices of vegetables, rice, milk powder, big onions, fresh fish and chicken have seen a rise. The core inflation, which reflects the underlying inflation in the economy, increased to 8.8% in November from 7.2% in October. Further, the annual average core inflation increased to 5% in November from 4.6% in October. Speaking to First at Nine, 
head of the Department of Business Economics at the University of Sri Jayawardenepur. Professor Janak Kumar Singh says that the situation is not at a favorable level. It's really alarming because this is the first time in the recent two decades we have recorded double digit inflation. Sri Lanka has recorded 11.1% inflation with a negative 3 point economic growth rate and also in this inflation around 8.8 pressure is coming from the food and power sector and also the fuel sector inflation which will directly have an impact on our industrial sector so at the moment we all know that our economy is burning from two side that's in the inside inflationary pressure and also the outside the dollar pressure that we are having we don't have dollar we have to pay a huge long installment this inflation will definitely have an impact on our industrial sector that will increase the cost of production if our cost of production goes this will work as a vicious circle that will reduce our import competitiveness in the world market that will reduce the import income further that mean further this issue would be widening there are two main causes of inflation number 1 the demand pull inflation which is due to aggregate demand exceeding the aggregate supply Number 2 is the cost push inflation which is a substantial increases in the cost of important goods or services where no suitable alternative is available unfortunately at this moment our inflation is not the demand pull inflation in a way demand pull inflation is good because that will gives a signal to the investors to invest more we have to take corrective measures to reduce the cost side to do that the only thing is we have to increase the production of the intermediary goods and we have to use more and more domestic intermediary goods and we have to give more and more facilities to our entrepreneurs and domestic investors to reduce this inflation that is the only solution we could see in the short term as well as in the long term otherwise the next level is the hyper inflation if we reach a hyper inflation that will have more serious issues in the economy niyama quality at hadana alu tiara rasa padamata alu twela Sri Lanka has struck a deal with Iran to settle a 250 million US dollar fuel bill with Ceylon Tea. Sources say that the move has nothing to do with the country's dollar crisis. Though the tea board is happy about the move especially since it enables the increase of Ceylon Tea market share in Iran, Planters Association is not too happy to be paid in rupees. It is no secret that Sri Lanka is going through an economic crunch. Foreign reserves are down to around 1.5 billion US dollars. The government was pushed towards removing price controls and now the price of goods and commodities are the highest the island has experienced for some time. In this backdrop, Sri Lanka struck a deal with Iran to pay outstanding fuel bills in Ceylon tea. The sum involved is 250,925,169 US dollars, which is an outstanding from the Ceylon Petroleum Corporation. Despite the timing of the move, this is not a measure implemented to address the country's dollar shortage, but it sure helps. Sources say that the barter deal with Iran had been in the making for past 3 years. A memorandum of understanding in this regard was signed yesterday by the Minister of Plantations Dr. Ramesh Pathirana and Deputy Minister of Industry, Mine and Trade of Iran Ali Reza Peman Park. Iran had been among the top importing countries of Ceylon tea for the past several decades. In Iran, Ceylon tea had a market share of around 47% in 2016. but that dropped to around 25% in 2020 and has remained static since this has been due to economic sanctions imposed by the US in 2012 on Iran resulting in banking restrictions payment problems and depreciation of the Iranian rial this meant Sri Lankan tea exporters found it difficult to receive the export proceeds from Iranian buyers as such through yesterday's MOU the country will be able to pay its outstanding fuel debt to Iran without touching Sri Lanka's little foreign reserves under the agreement 5 million US dollars worth of Ceylon tea will be supplied to Iran. The procedure will be followed through until Sri Lanka settles the entire sum of around 250 million dollars while reimbursing the Sri Lankan tea exporters in Sri Lankan rupees. The Ministry of Plantation says that the scheme will not violate any UN or US sanctions since the tea has been categorized as a food item under humanitarian grounds while none of the blacklisted Iranian banks will be involved in the equation. Firstly we try to settle the balance for the purchases of fuel 
that we have brought over a period of time by sending Ceylon tea to your country. So we settled the loan and also in the process we try to strengthen the market share again which is something very important for Ceylon tea. And also on the other hand we knew that because of the sanctions we couldn't settle the dues in dollar terms but also it's mutually benefiting even though we don't get foreign revenue in dollar terms it's important that we strengthen our market share and also we strengthen the bilateral relationship between two countries. So and also on long term basis we expect the sanctions would be lifted and relaxed and also we should be able to send more tea to your country. Currently we send tea to your country through different channels and also we are expecting to send more tea on top of what we send now during next months. So over a period of four years we try to settle 250 million dollars and we expect if possible to send more tea to your country. That effect would be trickled down to the Sri Lankan growers. But unfortunately because of turbulent times that we experience economic and otherwise in most of the Middle Eastern countries, our market share and also our market prices were a little affected. So most of the, the importing countries including Iran, Iraq, Turkey, Syria, all those countries were unfortunately going through a lot of civil issues. So we expect to see a better day tomorrow. We hope that sanity would prevail in the Middle Eastern countries so that we will have a better market for our Ceylon tea. And also we are looking at improving the quality production. So, so government of this country is providing all the assistance to the tea growers of this country because it's a vital element in Sri Lankan economy. Nearly 2 million people of this country are directly and in directly involved with the Ceylon tea sales and the plantation sector. However, not everyone is happy with the move, especially the Planters Association. Reuters quoted chairman of the Planters Association, Roshan Rajadure, as saying that this mode of transaction is a plaster solution by the government. He had further expressed discontent, saying that it doesn't necessarily benefit exporters as they will be paid in rupees, circumventing the free market, and it provides no real value to them. Now then, the removal of the MV Express Pearl wreckage from Sri Lankan waters has hit a snag after the salvers discovered a large crack in the wreckage. This is said to push the wreckage removal further back, with the Marine Environment Protection Authority expecting the process to take months. MIPA told First at Nine that two separate companies are handling the removal of the sunken vessel itself and clearing the ocean bed of containers. More than seven months have passed since Sri Lanka experienced its largest marine disaster. On the 20th of May, the feeder vessel MV Express Pearl caught fire within the Colombo Port jurisdiction area. The authorities took measures to save its crew and attempts were made to douse the fire. But the end result was the ship sinking within Sri Lankan waters. The chemicals leaked from the vessel caused loss of life to a large number of marine species and many of them washed ashore. Further, the plastic pellets washed ashore polluted the country's coastal belt from Point Dondra to Mana. The sunken vessel was taken out of Sri Lankan waters in November by the salvers. But gas-related incidents, COVID and economic pressures on the country meant the sunken ship and everything else related to it, such as compensation claims, slipped under the radar. Today, the Marine Environment Protection Authority gave an update on where things stand. For the environment damage assessment, we have appointed an expert panel and then that expert panel has submitted their first interim environment damage assessment report and that was sent to Australian legal experts through Honourable AG for their comments. Once we receive the comments from the Australian legal firm, we will actually hand that over to the Honourable Prime Minister and then that will be available for the public as well for their reference. We have the underwater containers and the wreck there in our waters. We cannot actually produce a final report until the wreck and the underwater containers are removed. Once they remove all those things, we'll be able to do the final report. Until such time, we'll be producing interim reports. With regards to the claims submitted by the Marine Environment Protection Authority, Lahanapura said that Sri Lanka can expect another compensation payment in the near future. As our first interim claim, we claimed 40 million US dollars and out of that we received 3.6 million US dollars. In our first interim claim, there were expenses incurred to Sri Lankan institutions plus forecasted cost. And this claim for the period from 20th May to 2nd June and actual cost incurred during that period and forecasted cost for two uh, months afterwards. So what this insurance company communicated to us was to claim the incurred cost as and when incurred. Now we have submitted our second claim 
covering the period from 3rd June to 31st August and amount into nearly 3.9 million and out of that they have communicated their willingness to pay 2.5 million and they are asking further evidences for the balance payment and that will be remitted to Sri Lankan government very soon. I think within a week or so it will come to our treasury and apart from our claim, fisheries ministry also has submitted another separate claim covering the damage and losses to the fisheries community. In the meantime, the charred and sunken vessel lies still at the bottom of the Sri Lankan seas. The wreck removal, however, comes in two parts. One is the removal of the wreck itself and the other is the removal of containers from the seabed. The MIPA chairperson said that two separate companies have been appointed by the ship's owners for the two tasks. The removal of the containers is undertaken by US-based company Resolve Marine. They have started underwater container removing and they have done a survey. This is actually underwater survey they have done using remotely operated vehicles and they have identified the areas as well and numbered. So to carry out the task, they have actually brought a vessel to our waters named MMV Prestige. We have sent two officers from our institution to do the full-time monitoring and supervision there. And then as of today, they have identified nearly 387 objects and out of 387 they have removed so far 190 objects and whatever removed from the underwater will be taken to a yard in Vattara and then it will be segregated. Whatever the waste that we can manage or dispose properly without damaging environment can be disposed here. The rest of the waste they will have to take it out from the country. As for the removal of wreck, the ship owners have handed the contract to Shanghai Salvage Company which is a division of China's Ministry of Transport. One of their vessels are here in our waters and the method they are planning is to bring down two floating cranes and underneath to send nearly 63 lifting strings and to lift it from the two ends. But then it was identified during their preliminary survey with divers that there's a crack. So they'll be doing further investigation and if necessary, they will have to use the same method but then cutting this into two pieces. This process at least will take a few months. Uh, Resolve Marine actually, they mentioned at least they will take 150 days uh, to remove underwater contents, but they are progressing very fast. Similarly, uh, Shanghai Salvage Company, when we uh, asked them, they also told us it will take more than four or five months, meaning that more than 150 days, but we hope that similar to Resolve, they also will accelerate or they will uh, speed up. We will see you shortly. Bear with us. Big Three. Welcome back. You're watching First at Nine. Now, the All Island Strike launched by the Government Medical Officers Association was in effect for a second straight day today. There were disgruntled patients at some hospitals, while other hospitals functioned as normal. Though the GMOA is insisting that political infringements is the, in the post-internship appointment process is what they are unhappy about, other medical unions accuse the GMOA of harboring a cheap ulterior motive. The strike launched by the Government Medical Officers Association yesterday was in effect today as well. Just as it was the day before, people who came to hospitals were left to their own devices. As a result, there were long queues at private clinics. The GMO is basing their strike against the Health Ministry's decision to change the existing process of making post-internship appointments via a transfers board. Members of the Transfers Board consisted of the Health Ministry officials as well as members of the GMOA, thus enabling trade unionists to have a say on transfers. This time around, however, the Health Minister had made post-internship appointments directly, sans involvement of the Transfers Board. The GMOA's demands have grown since the strike was first launched and the number of demands now stand at seven. But a discussion held in this regard with the Health Secretary had not yielded desired results and the matter is left unresolved. Sauke <laughs> 
ඉදිරිපත් කරන්න පුළුවන් නම් මෙන්න මේ වෛද්‍යවරයාගේ මෙරිට් කුසලතාංක මේක මේ වෛද්‍යවරයාගේ ජේෂ්ඨත්වය මේක මේ වෛද්‍යවරයාට ලැබිය යුතු තැන මෙතන එතන නොලැබිලා තිනවා කියලා එහෙම නොලැබිලා තිනවා පෙනී දෙනවා තින අපි ඒක ඉඳලා ඔය කියන කට්ටිය මුලින්ම වෙන්න ඕනේ ඒකලෝ වෛද්‍යවරු වෙන්න ඕනේ වෛද්‍යවරු හැටියට වෛද්‍ය සභාවේ ලියාපදිංචියක් නැති කෙනෙක් වෛද්‍යවරු ගැන කතා කරාම මේක පැටලෙනවා කෙටි කාලීනව යම් කිසි අපහසුතාවයක් ජනතාවට ලැබෙනවා තමයි නමුත් අපි මේ තුල බලන දේ තමයි දීර්ඝ කාලීනව මේ සෞඛ්‍ය ක්ෂේත්‍රය ආරක්ෂා කරගන්නේ කොහොමද කියලා මේ දේශපාලඥ අතපෙවීමෙන් වෘත්තීය ගරුත්වය නැති කරන යුගයේ අවසන් කිරීමට අපි සියලුම වෘත්තීය සමිති නායකයන් එක්ක සාකච්ඡා ආරම්භ කිරීමට සූදානම් කරලා තියෙනවා ආගමික නායකයන් ගරුතර මහා සංඝරත්නේ මහනායක හිමිපාණන් ඇතුළු කාදිනල් හිමිපාණන් මේ පිළිබඳ අපි දැනුවත් කිරීමට අද දිනේ කටයුතු කරනවා Other medical officers unions however don't share the same view as the Government Medical Officers Association. They allege that the GMO's motive behind calling for the old system of appointments is to bolster their membership by recruiting those who are given post internship appointments. Me vena vita e vaidyavaru kisidu ada vena kota madhyamagin pennana varadi video clips nema inan ada veddi meka ithamath asarthaka weda warjanayak bawata pat vela thiyena samahara madhya pennana me weda warjane nisa rogin ithamath asapasuwakata pat vela kiyala ona boruda onna ape thiyena rohal paddathiya diha balanna iye jathika rohala sampurne bahira rogiyanche mulu samast rohalat weda kara ithin antimata bala gane yanakota me weda warjane asarthakai වෛද්‍යවරු ප්‍රතිචාර දක්වන්නේ නැහැ. ඔය වෛද්‍යවරු පිරිසකින් සමහර අයත් වෛද්‍යවරුන්ට උත්සව සමයේ අවශ්‍ය කරන නිවාඩු ටිකක් ලබා ගැනීමටත් මේක යොදවගෙන තියෙනවා ස්ට්‍රයික් එක. වෛද්‍යවරුන් කල්පනා කරන්න ඕනේ මොනාද ලබන ජයග්‍රහණය කියලා මේ ස්ට්‍රයික් එක අවසානයේ. හොඳම කරුණක් මම කියන්නම් හවසට ඔය පුද්ගලික වෛද්‍ය සේවය තැන් වලට ගිහිල්ලා බලන්න. ඒවා නැතා පරිදි වැඩ. ඒක තමයි අපිට පේන්න තිය හොඳම දේ ඩොක්ටර්ස්ලා කියනවා. අපි මොකටද සට චැනල් නොකරන්නේ අපි උදේ වැඩ කරන්නේ ඒක තමයි හොඳම සාධකය මේ රෝහල් පද්ධතිය ඇත්තට කඩා වැටුණද කියලා Meanwhile local health authorities have confirmed three more Omicron covid patients in the island All three are returnees from African countries Japan which is one of the first countries to close its borders due to Omicron fears reported its first instance of community spread infection from Omicron today The cases are from the same family and none of the people traveled abroad According to the Japanese health minister these infections of the omicron variant in the prefecture of Osaka were a case of community transfer because the infection route was not clear In France the omicron variant accounts for 20% of new covid infections and it's spreading rapidly particularly in the Paris region During the last 24 hours France had registered around 73000 new coronavirus infections Meanwhile in Sri Lanka the health authorities have confirmed three more omicron cases and all of them are returnees from african countries දැනට වාර්තා වෙලා තියෙන සාධක අනුව තැන්සානියාවෙන් පැමිණි පුද්ගලෙකුත් සුඩාන් වලින් පැමිණි පුද්ගලයන් දෙදෙනෙකුත් වාර්තා වෙලා තියෙන තුන් දෙනෙක් දැනට වාර්තා වෙලා තියෙනවා. මුන්න මේ මාසේ 16 වෙනි දින සහ 20 වෙනි දින තමයි ලංකාවට පැමිණිලා තියෙන්නේ. දැනට කරපු පරීක්ෂණ අනුව මේක ඩෙල්ටා වලට වඩා කීප ගුණයකින් එහෙම නැත්නම් ප්‍රතිශතයක් විදිහට ගත්තොත් සමාරකට 150ක් කියලා 170ව ගුණයකින් පැතිරගෙන යන්න පුළුවන්. Meanwhile on the vaccination front a total of 2,840,356 persons had obtained the booster dose by last evening that number amounts to 12.9% of the country's total population Welcome back this is first at night now taking a look at the Colombo bulls the all share price index ended at 11,821.56 after gaining 180.65 points today The S&P SL20 index of more liquid stocks meanwhile gained 46.84 points to end at 4219.52. The market turnover was 3.7 billion rupees. Now here's a brief report on today's market performance. Today we saw a market gaining the momentum and recovering back to the green territory after two consecutive days of being in the red zone while diversified financial sector counters and energy sector counters were the main contributors to move the index up during the day. However, despite the bullish session, the main highlight is that turnover recorded at a one and a half month low as activities were into the lower scale compared to the past few days and number of trades has declined to 35,507 compared to yesterday, mainly due to the cautious sentiment by a lot of investors. 
turnover recorded at 3.8 billion which is lower compared to yesterday led by mainly energy and food and beverage sectors. The Sri Lankan rupee, meanwhile, continues to be at 202.99 cents against the US dollar. Now, let's take a look at how the Sri Lankan rupee fared against other major currencies during the day. Now then, with just two days to go until the dawn of Christmas, there's a reminder that we have a greater responsibility towards one another. Now here's our special seasonal segment. Friends, Christmas is a season not only for rejoicing, but of reflections. What is Christmas? Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. This is a great summary statement of Christmas, good news of hope. It's tenderness of the past, courage for the present, hope for the future. The spirit of Christmas is forgiving, giving reconciliations. Within our own time of this COVID-19 pandemic, we have gone through misleading, misinterpretations, misunderstanding, so on and so forth. But God being our helper is with us. One person speaking the truth as more than a whole city living in falsehood. This pandemic has shattered all of us, our egoist, evil, selfish approach towards one another as well as towards our creations. I wish you all a happy Merry Christmas with a spiritual blessing and good health. As we step into the brand new year 2022, let us hold in our heart and mind that you and I have the great responsibility towards one another. And that's it from all of us here at First at Nine. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.